American Revolution was an international event of global implications. Many Europeans who had found themselves attracted to the ideas of John Locke and other Enlightenment thinkers were swept up in the fervor of liberty and equality as espoused in the Declaration of Independence. Behind me stands a statue to General Rochambeau, the French foreign officer who was most responsible for helping George Washington bring an end to the American Revolution at the Siege of Yorktown in 1781. Rochambeau was not like other foreign fighters who came here willingly and voluntarily on their own. He was sent by the French king to lead the French forces that served under the command of George Washington. This does not dismiss the role that he played because he played a huge role in bringing about the end of the British Empire in North America. The most adored and beloved foreign fighter to serve the American cause was the 19-year-old Marquis de Lafayette. Lafayette was the ultimate lover of liberty, and at the age of 19, he financed his own voyage to cross the Atlantic and come and serve George Washington. So touched was Washington by this gesture that Washington immediately made the young Lafayette into his immediate circle of military family. In fact, in many ways, Lafayette became one of the sons that Washington adopted by default since he had no children of his own. Additionally, other Europeans influenced by the Enlightenment included Friedrich von Steuben, a captain in the Prussian army, one of the German states, would come to the United States at the behest of Benjamin Franklin, who is courting von Steuben in Paris, and guarantees von Steuben a commission as a general in the new Continental Army. Most of America's military successes after the encampment of Valley Forge are directly attributed to the training that Friedrich von Steuben put under the American army. Others included Kasimir Pulaski from Poland, who came and helped put together the American cavalry forces. Some of the Europeans that served to fight in the American cause paid the ultimate price, such as Johann de Kalb, who was bayoneted to death in a futile counterattack at the Battle of Camden, South Carolina. He is one of two generals of foreign extraction to be bayoneted to death during the American Revolution. The other, Hugh Mercer of Scotland, who served in Washington's army, is bayoneted at the Battle of Princeton in 1777. Another officer who found fame in the American Revolution was Tadeusz Kuzuszku, a Polish engineer who came to the United States, helped create the fortifications at West Point. In homage to these individuals, as the new United States spread, many towns and cities were named after these individuals, like Pulaski County, Virginia, Lafayette, Louisiana, DeKalb, New York. It should be noted that European soldiers did not just fight in the cause of American independence. The British hired German mercenaries from several of the German principalities to come here and serve alongside the British as mercenary troops. What's ironic is that these Germans, many of them at the end of the war, decided America was a great place to settle, and many of them settled in the United States, making a new home here in the irony of ironies. We owe our independence not only to Americans like George Washington, Nathaniel Green, and others, but we also owe it to the men who took the charge, raised their own money, and came at their own expense to serve in a cause that changed the shape of global politics forever.